ba ba bum. Hey everybody, last out Rager here with a quick inquisitorial analysis. Trump is sick. What happens? Hmm. So many people freaking out. And really, there's nothing to freak out about. Let me explain why. First, we're going to cut to the important point. How does this affect the election? It really doesn't. The only thing that would affect the election is if Trump dies. Now, if that were to happen, it's very clear. Even though it's very close to the election day, Pence would become president. Pence would be the person on the ballot. And under such situations in the past, he would then run, continue to run for president. Um, and then they, we would have to select who would be vice president. But with the election so close, we really wouldn't have to select vice president unless he wins, right? Because the election would probably happen before they could select a vice president and Pence would most likely lose and therefore you don't really have to go through the process of selecting a vice president. Now, the other question is, and this is far more important, is will the Republicans take this as an opportunity to remove Trump from the election and presidency altogether? Why would they do that, you say? because of what's called the down ticket vote. You see, not only is Trump losing, but he's taking all other Republicans who are running for office right now with him because of what they call straight ballots. That means people who walk in and just click Democrat or Republican for the entire ticket. They don't care who it is. Now, the Republicans have been trying very hard to block straight ballots for the first time in history uh, because they know how bad Trump is losing. Texas, Michigan, I believe Wisconsin, and three other states all tried to block, to make straight ballot voting illegal for this election. That shows you how little confidence the Republican Party has in Donald Trump winning. They wanted to make sure that if you, you could not just go in there and click Democrat or Republican. You would need to individually vote yes and no on every single candidate because they know Trump losing will also bring down a whole lot of other people. So far, the courts have thrown out all attempts for the Republicans to do this. Now, what does this mean? Since the Republicans know they're losing and they're losing bad, it could be determined that the best course of action for the Republican Party is to remove Trump from the election altogether. Yes, they lose the presidency, but they may retain some of their other down ticket votes since they are losing all of their straight ticket bans. You see what I'm saying? Now, with everybody would need to go and vote individually because Trump isn't on the ticket, so people might take time to think about the people further down on the ballot. These people will be going up to Republican leadership and say, hey, if Trump gets really sick, which we should know within five days if this becomes a serious COVID-19 case or remains a minor one, that's how long it takes. However, Trump is in a very high-risk category with multiple comorbidities. What do I mean? I mean, he's 74, high risk. He's morbidly obese, comorbidity. He's got high blood pressure, most likely, comorbidity. He's got high cholesterol, most likely, from eating nothing but K 
KFC and McDonald's his whole life. Another comorbidity. He has a sedentary lifestyle. What do you mean? I mean, Donald Trump doesn't seem like the guy to exercise. So he's got high risk category and four comorbidities. This puts him in mm, not, well, not a person to bet on. In addition, and this is the funny part, the uh, Republican um, medical experts like Dr. Scott are saying that if Trump does die from this, it should not be counted as a COVID-19 death because COVID-19 technically isn't what killed him. It's one of his comorbidities. So guess what? That's pretty funny. It's even more funny is I would like to see if he's going to get so he's going to be put on a regimen of um, hydroxychloroquine for his treatment, or will they decide not to do that? <sighs> Maybe they'll even I don't know see if they're going to check test on any of these um, vaccines to see if that will help. What do you think? Will it will. He, he, th he says they should be out by election day. So, hey, they're safe, right? Anyways, if the Republican Party decides to remove Trump from the ticket, meaning that the since the cabinet is all Republicans and they can use the 25th Amendment to simply remove the president from office because they believe he is no longer able to do his job, he will then no longer be president. Um... Does that remove him from the ballot, though? Huh. Not really, which is the fun part. But that's what they're going to have to decide at this point. Do they, uh, 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 if they can just remove him from the ballot, and then the moment he's no longer president, he would be uh, subject to any number of legal entanglements, to put it nicely, which could be used to then just, you know, stop him from taking part in the election. That way they save their down party elections and uh, a down ticket elections and just run against uh, uh, the Democrats. That's what they're going to have to think about. Like I said, five days to find out if this is a serious case. Some people, the conspiracy theorists, think that Trump isn't actually sick at all, that this entire thing is just made up to draw attention away from the horrific presidential debate that happened. Um, either way, even if it was mildly sick, it's still two weeks of quarantine in a four, week, four weeks before an election. Wow. So he's going to spend two weeks in a hospital bed uh, and then come out two weeks before the election. Now, this might actually have some credence. What do you mean? I mean that if, if nobody else gets sick, out of all the other people he hangs around, out of all his staff members, if Kaylee McManey and everybody else all test negative, just Trump and Melania, that would be very strange. Uh, I mean, that would just break all probabilities, if that's the case. Now, on the other hand, if we are going statistically expected, well, then not only Trump, but a vast majority of his cabinet and advisors and campaign staff and secret service agents all would be getting sick too because this is a very infectious disease. So that's what I'm looking to see what would happen. How many other people are sick? That's my question. Let's see how this goes. Until then, ignore most of the crap you're going to hear. Nothing is really going to happen, okay? Uh, three possibilities, like I said. He gets sick and gets over it and gets back into the campaign two weeks before voting. All right, nothing needs to be done. 
He gets sick and gets seriously ill, needs to be put on a ventilator, blah, 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 which basically removes him as president and puts Pence in as president. And then the Republican Party could take this as a chance to permanently remove him as president. Uh, yeah, good possibility. Third, he dies. Okay. Uh, then the election continues basically with Biden running uh, unopposed as president. And again, that is good for the down ticket election for the Republicans uh, not worrying about, you know, uh, this would basically cut down on the number of Democrats who would go out to vote, right? Because Trump's dead. Therefore, it's just going to be Biden. Therefore, the Republicans will be going, whew, wow, <laughs> if they're not voting, then we can win all of these other elections. Just let them have the presidency, which they would have gotten anyway, and then the vast majority of the Democrats would then just stay home, and we could win these other elections, like keeping the Senate. See what I mean? So either dead or um, incapacitated and removed. Both of these work in the benefit of the Republicans on the down ticket elections. That's what I predict they are going, it is the direction they're going to go into. Um, but if, if they try to replace the presidential on the election on the ballots, constitutionally speaking, replacing a candidate typically occurs in the order of popularity, not determined by political party. That means they would look at, of all the candidates who was running for president, who was the third most popular. And that person is the person who should replace Trump on the ticket. And that would be Bernie Sanders. Hmm. So if this, if this were to become a contingency election and it would be shifted over to uh, the House of Representatives in the Senate, the Constitution says three most popular candidates are who the um, House of Representatives gets the vote on. Well, that would be, well, with, that would, <laughs> with Trump gone, that would have been number one popular, Biden, number two popular, uh, Bernie Sanders, number three popular, Elizabeth Warren. That would be the three choices for president, not broken down according to party affiliation. The Senate would then have to choose the three most popular candidates for, I guess, vice president. I have no idea how they would do that. Anyways, um, that's what would happen if they really had to replace somebody. So looking at the chance that three Democrats would be who they have to choose for president, again, you could see they're not going to be particularly excited for this to go off into a contingency election. Everything would be pointed either Trump gets better two weeks before the election or just let it go, keep as many Democrats home so that they don't affect the down ticket elections and, and pray that this allows the, the, the Republicans to keep the Senate. That's the analysis. Enjoy. Bye.